Hello, I'm Black Bright, welcoming you to my home and thank you for welcoming me into yours. Um, if you like my channel, you can like, subscribe and share. You can write comments, you can email me at the email in the description if you want me to talk about something, only um, nothing too long please. And yeah, I kind of like to please my um, subscribers, so if you let me know otherwise, I just go with the flow. If I find something interesting, I'll just talk about it. Now today, I noticed in the Jamaican Gleaner that they were saying <clears throat> that Afrobeats is replacing reggae. Now, I don't agree, but, you know, um, the Jamaican Gleaner has got their reasons for saying so. I just think they're two totally different genres, and I think maybe it is um, replacing, but I also think it depends on the audience. Who is reggae appealing to? I think reggae could be seen as becoming outdated and I think that is the problem because reggae is for a, is really for those of us who are quite mature and yes you have younger artists who do dance hall but then even dance hall just appeals to a certain segment of the market and one thing with reggae is that it's broken up into so many genres like you've got lovers rock you've got dance hall you've got um uh what you call it treasure isle you've got the oldish you know like the vintage reggae you've got um what else have you got i can't even think now and i'm a bloody dj oh incidentally if you like reggae music i'm on the last friday of the month on lovers rock radio 7 p.m till 9 p.m that's uk time but yeah there's so many um genres within reggae music that a lot of people you've got Rocksteady that's another one that just came to mind that a lot of people they kind of go for the area that they like and the thing with Afrobeats I don't know why they've taken Afrobeats and compared it with reggae because Afrobeats likewise is just a small sector of African music that's taken off and I think it's taken off because it appeals to the young people. And the young people are what are listening to the music. They like the sound of it. They're the ones that are downloading it. And so, whereas the, um, the older generation, even if the people in their 30s, 40s, yeah, they might download a few of the, of the people that they know. You know, they have their favourites. And it's like you find the British blacks, they love Lover's Rock. And if you pay a Lover's Rock tune ten times, it will receive the, It will resonate within them the same way. And if you go to a dance and they're playing strictly Lover's Rock, it could be Louisa Marx, it could be Peter Hunningale, the same artist over and over again, they'll still reverberate the same way. And that is what happens, you see, with a lover's rock era, they, they don't change. They kind of stick to that kind of sound. And okay, we've got um, Glenn Washington and we have um, Beres Hammond and we have people who've kind of snuck in, Deville. You know, we have people who've snuck in there, Egyptian and all of those. Here's what I found on the web. Oh, I hate this phone. Hold on a minute. Let me just switch it off. Because any time I talk and this phone is on, it feel, feels as though I'm talking to it. No, it doesn't even want to shut off. Why won't it shut off? It's so annoying. Excuse, sorry about this. I'll make a, I'm going to make sure because I'm going to switch it off completely. So I'm do not disturb and yet it still recognises my voice. That's why I find those phones so spooky. Anyway, as I was saying, you know, you have, you, I find that um, the black British in particular, they stick with a particular sound and particular artists. They're very loyal to what they love. 
And so when other artists try to introduce themselves on the reggae market, it's very hard to break that. I mean, we have, um, oh, it came into my head and then it went, um, Gabby, Gappy Ranks, that's what I was going to say, Gappy Ranks, that he broke in with a totally different sound, but it was still a kind of a lover's rock with heaven in heaven in your eyes, you know, that kind of kicked off. But it's very, very difficult. And so, but with um, Afrobeats, it's kind of, it's specialised. So it, nobody, no, everybody knows what they're going to expect. And I expect that similar to Lover's Rock um, followers, you're going to have the Afrobeat followers, and but the Afrobeat followers is so wide that you know it's got such a it's got a much larger audience, and plus, Lovers Rock is really for Brits. It hasn't it hasn't crossed over. It doesn't have that universal appeal. It's very very British. So and also another thing is that reggae is transferable. Look how many white reggae artists we have. I wrote them down here somewhere. There's so many of them. Hold on a minute. Uh, so I'm going to see how many I remember off by heart. But I seem very disorganised today, don't I? Okay, we've got Simply Red, Bad Manners, David Papacook, Adele Harley, Collie Buds, Gentlemen, Million Stylers, Alba Rosie, Ali Campbell, Snow Plenty, Mattis Jahu. And that's just to name a few of them. And they give you an authentic reggae sound. So if reggae is so easily emulated, it loses its value, it loses its power. And what will happen is, you know, it, it also loses the audience. Because a lot of white people who love reggae, they might prefer to go and listen to the white reggae artists rather than the black reggae artists, even though the black reggae artists are the originators. I don't think Afrobeat is so easy to emulate. I don't think you're going to find any white people trying to do Afrobeat. It's, it's a very, very unique sound. And I think that is why it's taken off. And I think more so, well, like it has got the young person's appeal to it. They can do that, you know, whatever they do with it. <laughs> oh, yes, they do all these weird little moves, bless them. Yeah, so that's what I think. I think it's more that reggae somehow has to catch up. And I think it's a bit outdated. They can't. You know, if you, with neurolinguistic programming, they say that if you model success, you can become successful. But if you copy in the music world, you know, it's called flagorism, isn't it? Or in the artistic or creative world. I and mean, then if you if you copy a culture, it's called cultural appropriation. So reggae artists can't now look at Afrobeat and say, boy, that's really successful. I'm going to jump on that bandwagon because they're going to be accused of cultural appropriation. So what is the answer? I think, like some of them have already done, they collaborate. Reggae and Afrobeats collaborate and that way they're working together and one party doesn't take away from the other and they're both lifting the genre up and they actually they'll actually merge that genre and maybe can call it something else they've already got afro swing and afro other kind of um, names for the african influence now let me tell you a little bit about how afro beats came into being in my disorganized way today i can't believe i'm so disorganized today but hey i'll put it down to me trying to recuperate that's what i'll put it down to it's a feeble excuse but hey what can i say okay two genres are different in, and appeal to different market both genres appeal to the soul so with reggae and afro beats there's something about um authentic reggae and authentic African music that hits you right in here.
And I think that is what gives it its power. And I can imagine the merging, the merger of the two sounds would be absolutely brilliant and successful. Okay, Afro beats, music of Nigerian Ghanaian origins. Um, and because UK loves its authenticity, it is not compromised. And that's the thing with Africa, Afro beats. It's not compromised in any shape or form. It's, you know, like when you go to an Indian restaurant and most of them, they dilute their food to cater to the Western palate. They compromise the recipe. And that's what I think reggae does a lot of the time. It compromises to suit the audience rather than sticking to being genuine. You do have the genuine ones like, you know, when you think of Peter Tosh, think of Bob Marley, you think of Burning Spear. Those old time, you know, the gay lads, all of them. You know, oh, Slim Smith. But when you think about them, they didn't compromise their music. Mind you. Um, Slim Smith did, and a lot of them, they took on country and western music, so that's what I'm saying. They've, they've tended to copy um, western music and give it a reggae sound. Afrobeats hasn't done that. Afrobeats is from the root. It's not emulating anybody. It's not emulating any culture. It's African. But I think the problem with reggae, as much as I love it, is that it does compromise itself by softening, by, you know, like I said, diluting what it could be. And you do have the ones that are really, really strong, but I feel sometimes they feel, well, if it's too maybe radical or if it's too... But then you think about Sizzler. I mean, they and Buju Banton, they don't compromise their music. But, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't know what the answer is. But like I said, it's broken into so many segments that you have those areas where the music, the reggae is compromised and you have those areas where it's not. But it's not enough to accumulate the mass following because it's broken up into little bits. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, um, what was I going to say here? Afrobeat Afro originated from Fuji, heavy Nigerian drum beat and Ghanaian high life. It was later exported to the southern part of Nigeria in 1970s by Fela Kuti, who experimented with many different forms of contemporary music of, of the time. From the likes of Fela Kuti, Sheena Peters and Crazy Culture, to the more recent introduction of P-Square, M.I., Davido, Don Jazzy, Dibang, um, Debange, um, Two Face Edibia, oh, I love his music, Ice Prince, Sway, um, Sarkodi, Donea, Niniola, Shatter Whale, Stoneboy, Tiwa Savage, Wizkid, and many more. The Nigerian music scene is selling out concert venues in New York, Paris, and London and performing at major music festivals. You see, reggae hasn't managed to do that. I mean, individual artists, yes. Like, okay, when we think about Bob Marley, and probably Sizzler might do that. I know Beres Hammond tends to sell out. I mean, there are those that do, but the, the genre as a whole doesn't sell out. And I think that is because it's broken up in too many different types of genres within itself. That's just my opinion. It's not a fact. Um, the evolution has in recent years seen the music gain greater acceptance and made more prominence in the UK, perhaps so much so that it's now rivaling or even exceeding the popularity of Jamaican dancehall, according to the Gleaner. What does Afrobeats have that reggae does not? I think reggae is too simply easy to emulate. Simply red, that's what I just said a while ago. I think it all depends on your environment though. Those loyal to reggae will always be loyal to reggae. For me, Af I find Afrobeats quite monotonous. So it's not for me, but there again, I'm not a young person. And that's what I'm saying. It's the young people are taking over with regard to sales and marketing. And reggae will have to get in into the young person's mindset. And the young person's mindset 
is not consciousness a lot of the time. It's not necessarily dancehall because dancehall is too brash. It might be okay for Jamaica, but it's not universal. Univer you know, different countries are not going to appreciate dancehall. You're going to have a small segment of that population who are going to like it. So therefore, you're not going to get that following that they need. So even that does appeal to the younger generation. Reggae needs something that is appeals to the young generation, but which is universal. Because that's what Afrobeats has managed to do. And it's because people, you know, those countries, I mean, the other countries who love them, they love its authenticity. And I was listening to it this afternoon while I was at work, you know, got my earphones in, you know, and I was thinking, yeah, it's kind of nice, you know what I mean? It made me, made me move and all that kind of stuff. But at the same token, after I heard about four or five tracks, I thought, oh God, I've had enough of this. You know, so it's not something for me, I can appreciate it, but it is more for the younger market. So that is what reggae needs to do. They need to find that sound that appeals to the reggae market on a global scale. Um, the American music industry recognised Jamaican-born hood celebrity whose track Walking Trophy was reaching an audience of around 8 million listeners a week in 2018 at one point. Personally, I like African Afrobeats and small doses. I've already said that. A lot of times I just write these notes to remind myself, but I already know what I'm going to say. Um, there's one Jamaican reggae every two to three years, explains producer Jax, in brackets, Cranium Jada Kingdom. The last big record was Conscience, Brock Off Your Buck. That's 2017. Before that, it was Cranian, Nobody Has to Know, in 2015. Before that, it was Egyptian, Wardia, 2010. Before that, it was Sarani, No Games, 2009. And the thing is with America, it comes like reggae is seasonal. They only like it in the summer. So what happens in the winter? Whereas it seems that like Afrobeat is relevant the whole year round. That doesn't make sense, does it? But that's what they're saying. Um, getting back to Afrobeats, by comparison, when Davido, one of Nigeria's biggest pop stars, performed in Suriname, a tiny country in the northeastern pocket of South America, 10,000 people turned up. Even he was shocked. Over the past year, the British charts have become dominated by songs with a West African and Caribbean flavour. It's not quite the Afrobeat sound rising from West Africa and going global, nor is it bashment, even if it owes some of its melodies and rhythms to the sounds hailing from Jamaica. Some have called it Afro bashment, Afro wave or Afro swing. And I'm going to put the source of where I got this information in the link below. Um, if reggae artists model this successful music trend, and that's what I was saying, it's called cultural appropriation. So um, to name something is to claim ownership. And with the Western music industry, long tradition of appropriation, ownership of Africa's latest export is something Africans on the continent cannot risk losing. So there's some way that they're actually, because you know what happened, I don't know if, how many of you know this, but when Lovers Rock came out in the 1960s and 70s and 80s, well, it was more 70s and 80s, really, um, they didn't realise how valuable their music was. But there were people out there, producers, who did know. And they bought all the rights to all of those lovers of rock artists. They paid them a few pounds, a few quid, and they took the rights to all their songs. And all they did was put them in collaborations. Now, a lot of those artists, even though you're playing their music, they don't get the royalties for it, which is really, really sad. So this is what um, Africans on the continent are trying to avoid. Uh, Just Snow Cone pointed out that the dedication with 
which Afrobeat artists approach their career is admirable. A dark style them love, Chateau Whale came to Jamaica, the home of the home of reggae and dancehall, and lived here for a year, absorbing the culture and the music. And look at Stone Boy. Look how much dancehall artists him collaborate with, he told the Gleaner. A Ghana born producer and a reggae dancehall musician, Chateau Wales official YouTube channel labels him the king of dancehall and Afrobeats. He sits at the top at July 2019 list of the top seven richest dancehall artists in Ghana, followed by Stone Boy. Another prominent Afrobeats figure is British Ghanaian singer-rapper Fuse ODG. He has broken on to the top 10 UK single charts several times, becoming the first Ghanaian to top the iTunes world chart. His dangerous love single features Sean Paul, addressing Afrobeats rise in a 2018 interview with Rolling Stone magazine. Sean Paul danced from Biggest Star Noted, the influence dancehall has brought to me, brought to the table, is evident now in Afrobeats. Kingston-based producer Jaboy boasts co-production co credits on DeVito's hit song Ikuro. He is currently working with another Nigerian star, Wizkid, on new music for 2020. So like I said, maybe collaboration and not appropriation is the answer. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.